All right, so the Primogen is gonna have a field day if he happens to watch this, but basically in my last video, I talked about how I added a proxy written in Go. And most of the code for this proxy, I just use cursor and claw to basically just dump it out, right? I just let it write the code. And I did go back through and read it, but there was a huge security vulnerability and someone reached out to me on an email and said, hey, you have this vulnerability. I have your secret API key. Here it is, and he sent it to me in an email. And that is a pretty big deal. So let's talk about how this code works. We'll talk about the vulnerability, and then we'll talk about some lessons learned from just blindly letting AI write your code. And by the way, I am using Convex for this example, but none of the security vulnerabilities are related to Convex. This is all just my own stupidity of writing some bad code and just letting AI do its thing. Okay, so here is the proxy service. What it basically does is a user makes a request to my proxy. In fact, I could just do a diagram for this. Here's my, my UI. My UI makes a request to my proxy. Just go ahead and say go proxy. And then my go proxy makes a request to my uh, a service, like an HTTP service, okay? And when it makes that request, it sends over an authorization header, right? So there's like a secret key that I'm storing in this service and also in this service. And so when that request is made, this service checks the authorization header and says, hey, is this secret key what I expect? And if it is, it then allows the files and videos to be sent back over. So if I get like a video icon, it allows the files and videos to be sent back over to the proxy. The proxy can then cache it or can do whatever it wants with the file. And then it sends it back to the UI where the user can view it. So this is a pretty standard thing, but to make my life a little bit easier, I actually allowed this thing to dynamically point to different services based on a project ID. So I have a project ID here, and if it's like B, it'll point to this one, and if it's A, it'll point to this one. But the issue is that this branching happens from a query string parameter. So if I go and go over here and say project ID is equal to A, this is what the user makes in the HTTP request, and the proxy looks at that, and then it changes a domain name based on that project ID query string which is a huge issue because I'll show you the code in a little bit. It might click a little bit better. The issue is, is that someone comes along, let's just find like a malicious uh, bad actor and they decide, you know what? I'm going to make a project as well. I'm going to call it project ID of bad. And basically all they need to do is make a request to the proxy. They can say project ID is equal to bad. And then that makes a request to their own service that they own, which they basically console log some headers, okay, console log some headers, and then that secret key, like I mentioned, is passed over in the request, and then they get the authorization header, and then they get the token. So a little oopsie there on my part, but let's talk about the code and how it works. So here's the Go proxy. Basically, it just accepts a request to a URL that looks like this. You pass in a project ID, you pass in a storage ID, and the proxy uses those to figure out that upstream service to connect to. Now let's check out the line where this is all kind of falling apart for my project. So right here, I'm doing a string interpolation on the domain itself. So someone can pass in whatever project ID that they want, like I mentioned in the diagram, and that just gets interpolated right here. Big issue, you should not be doing this. Looking at this now, this is like an obvious security issue, but uh, you know, this is a side project. I'm not spending a ton of time like reviewing the code. I'm just trying to ship stuff. Okay, so now let's demo this out. I'm gonna go ahead and run my proxy with a secret don't leak. Okay, so if I look over here, there's a convex API secret I get from the environment. So if I go ahead and just run this, that'll spin up my proxy. And then over here in my new request, I can actually send in whatever project ID that I want. So what I did is I went into convex and I spun up a new service. And this is going to have its own project ID. So imagine that this is like the malicious actor. They went into convex, they started a project, they get a project ID, and then they just make a request to my proxy go ahead and click send. And if they look over in their logs, this is going to print out all the headers. And you'll notice that it says bearer secret don't leak. So they just got access to my secret token and now they can do whatever they want with it. And then I just leaked my token. Granted, what can they do with this token? Probably not much because the only way they can use this token is if they have my code and can figure out what HTTP endpoints I have in my project where I'm verifying that self-made token. But if they could figure out some of those endpoints, which the only thing that connects those endpoints are my worker lambdas. So they would probably be spending a lot of time trying to guess what endpoints they could hit with that ID. And this is the code that the user had to write. Again, the only way that they would know about this endpoint is if they watched a video of me making it because 
there's nowhere else in the application that I'm making requests to this endpoint, so they'd have a hard time guessing. I guess they could try to brute force it, um, but I don't know how else they'd be able to figure this out. But if they did, then they can snipe those tokens as well. Here's my current fix, and guys, you can critique this if you want, but basically now I only have an allowed project ID list. So there's like one or two project IDs I allow, and anything else that gets sent in that doesn't match my allow list just throws an error. I think a better approach would be just hard code this whole thing, except for like the storage ID or something that could just be attacked onto the end. And then that could just be an environment variable. But technically this is kind of the same thing. I just have like a, I guess you could call like a whitelist or an allow list of what project IDs we can allow on the query string. And then if it's not something that matches what I know, just throw an exception. That's basically the fix. And then I check it down here. So if like the project ID that came in the query string does not match that whitelist, just throw an error and don't do anything else. So let's talk about the fun part, which is AI and using AI in your daily workflow. So the first thing I did when someone emailed me is I went and I asked AI, hey, hey, can you find any security issues with this code? So can you find any security issues with this code? So when I first asked this, the AI said everything looks fine in this code. And now when I ask it again, it's actually giving me more insights. So one thing I'd recommend doing if you're using AI is ask it to check your code, not just for generic security vulnerabilities, but Get a list of like common exploits that you may know of and put them in a list and ask it like, can you find SQL injection in this code? Can you find some open redirect in this code? And so if you scroll down, it says, hey, there's a lack of input validation. So that's the first thing I should probably fix is that these project IDs and storage IDs, they need to be like specific UIDs and structure. And so I could probably refactor the code to check for that. Now, if I scroll down, the second vulnerability it says is potential for open redirect. So this is giving me a suggestion that, hey, I should probably be verifying that, you know, the domain that I'm trying to make the request to is a allowed domain. So that's another thing that it pointed out this time that it didn't this, the first time around. And then it's warning me that I could be logging some stuff out that could be sensitive. I don't think that's an issue. And then rate limiting. I should probably be adding some rate limiting to this service as well. But this is in front of Cloudflare, which has rate limiting in place. So that's, that's fine. Um, but it doesn't hurt to just add it to the service itself. Okay, so that's takeaway number one is after you write code, if you're using AI, ask it multiple different ways. Can you find any security issues? And then if you know about security issues, ask it about a list, like a curated list of like, can you check my code for security issue A, B, C, D? Because I think it'll do a better job at finding those issues. The second takeaway is don't blindly just use code that AI gives you. You should read through it. You should do your own code review. And granted, finding this issue, I mean, like this, this is very obvious looking at it now, but you're reading through a lot of code and it's 12 o'clock at night. Like this is something that a human can just glance over and be like, oh, I guess it's fine. And then ship it to production and everything twice about it. Uh, the third takeaway is anytime that you're trying to make requests to domains, you should probably just whitelist those domains, like have an allow list of what domains you can contact. And if you're doing any type of string interpolation, that should also be like red flag areas of like, double, triple check what you're interpolating has been sanitized and also verify that it is part of some type of an allow list so that people can't inject whatever they want. And because I'm still like a noob at Go, there could be more security vulnerabilities with just blindly injecting strings into this larger string. For example, the storage ID I'm injecting over here in the query string, maybe there's something else that they could inject over here that could cause issues, but Again, just sanitize your inputs. Don't be lazy like I was. Don't rush like I was doing. Just do it properly. But anyway, I'm thankful for the person who pointed out the security vulnerability. And I hope you guys learned something from watching this video. Just check your code. Make sure it's all good. And uh, yeah, like always, have a good day. Happy coding.